is up guys it is Sam here and I'm starting my vlog here in the Philippines so we arrived yesterday from Malaysia after a very long day of traveling like maybe 17 18 hours because we've now arrived in Puerto Princesa which is a city that's normally kind of overlooked by um, by people that basically come to Palawan they just go straight to El Nido and Coron so we're just here like for one day on a stopover because we were absolutely knackered last night so I'm gonna show you just a little bit around the city here um, just for the day and then we're gonna be going up to El Nido tomorrow where we're gonna be spending five nights which is like one of the most popular places to go here in the Philippines so yeah hopefully you enjoy this and uh, yeah one thing I'm gonna to touch on though is Manila Airport Manila Airport like we arrived into like Terminal 2 and we had to like get a bus and like go out like out into the city and then like come around to go like around to, like the other terminal to, to, to fly out of there so piece of advice if you are getting connection flight in Manila make sure they're in the same terminal or make sure you have an extended period um, of a layover to make sure that you can have enough time because the delays there can be quite a lot. Immigration for us was actually fine, there was not that many people in the queue but I've heard it can be quite bad as well so make sure you do have a lot of time if you are connecting in Manila Airport but yeah it doesn't have a reputation of being one of the world's worst airports for no reason. We're on the main street pretty much here in Puerto Princesa like so down there you've got like all the McDonald's and like fast foods and stuff um, these are weird little bit more the transport that they have, the jeepneys and um, they've also got horrendous wiring which is uh, yeah, up there look at that, the wiring is back but they've got these nice little tinsel things going the whole way down the road and uh, yeah, it's pretty nice really um, not footpaths everywhere but it's, yeah, it's pretty nice and they have plastic collection bottles actually everywhere as well so they're quite conscious of that here and trying to keep Palawan in the best shape that they can. So Christianity is huge here in the Philippines. I'll see it everywhere, like it's, it's heavily Catholic since the Spanish occupation days. So Jesus is Lord. But here we are in the Port of, in the Port of Princesa. Um, public market is over here, so you've got all of the like local market stuff. Um, we may go in there in a while, but we're gonna go down to the docks. But you've got like a, a Spanish-y kind of feel to this place with like American influence from the occupation days and also what we kind of think is kind of a Mexican feel. When I looked up, they did actually, the Mex head of Mexico's occupation for Spain actually did actually run the place until Mexico independence. But yeah, you've got an influence of uh, Spanish and American here because you've got all the chains as well, like Denny's and Wendy's, all them kind of chains. So yeah, it's interesting. Come down to the port. Like, we've actually just come into like, a fishing port. I thought it was actually just going to like a walk along the kind of bay here. But it's actually just like a load of like little kind of shops and importing stuff. But um, yeah, you've got a great view of the mountains across the way, which I didn't really know were here, but it's huge mountains. Um, got a weird looking ship over there. Look at that. I wouldn't like to be on it. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go walk all along here. Apparently it's like a park up here, but it just looks like it's a like barren or something like that here. It's kind of strange, but anyway. Got these kind of like boats just on like rafts. I don't, I don't really understand. Like these do not look safe. They're going out fishing or something on them. Anyway, she's not getting anything really goes. It's back to like on the collecting plastic and stuff here that they do here. All these boats are actually floating on packs of plastic. So maybe that's where it's going, but then you probably run the risk of it going back into the ocean. But yeah, they're all like floating on plastic bottles. <laughs> we were just down like on the front there we just had uh, a drink and then we were just walking back and just saw all these like tents and stuff kind of set up I didn't want to film it but um, basically like what it was was like a, it's like an orphanage so there was like a little kid kind of came up to us and he was asking for money and stuff and um, just gave him yeah just gave him like something small and I was like why is all these kids running around here and we found that so it's a huge place and they're all like yeah living in tents um, which is pretty, pretty grim. Some of the living arrangements here uh, are not very good, to say the least. For sure though, it is just as chaotic as the rest of Southeast Asia. All the tricycles absolutely everywhere. Traffic is pretty bad here. We're just trying to go to like a shopping mall. Yeah, you've just got all no days and going past, it's quite hilarious. The chaoticness of what I just like showed you, you have this like huge super shopping mall inside there. 
loads and loads of stuff in it. And it just feels like you're in a different country when you step inside it, compared to the chaos that is outside here. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a bit surreal. One thing that is very, very apparent here is there is a lot of poverty. Something like 22 to 23% of the population actually live below the poverty line, which is like under like a dollar a day or something like that. Um, and you can't see it. It is apparent everywhere. So I don't really want to gloss over the fact of that. Because uh, most people come here and they show like all oh, the good stuff. And it's amazing, which it's very, very nice. People are very, very friendly. But it's hard to gloss over um, the real situation that is here for local Filipinos. night but we've just been woken up at half past seven in the morning because the whole town is out here so let's have a, have a look at this this is a little festival going on Fifty-six years apparently since this city was formed that's what the parade is for it's <laughs> It's hilarious. <laughs> like halfway up here to El Nido and this is just the little beach that we have come across so yeah this is a, something of things to come amazing so we have arrived in El Nido at uh, we're actually staying at the Corong Corong beach not actually in the town itself but we will be going over to that but uh, yeah our accommodation is really really nice so we'll show it later on I just want dying to get some food but um, yeah looking forward to the next five days here in Alido, it's gonna be really good. So this is where we're having dinner, just at this like little pizza spot here. But uh, yeah, the views here are pretty sensational. The sun is blinding though. But uh, yeah, this is where we are. This is our first sunset that we've actually seen here in the Philippines. Because in the city, it's kind of difficult to get a good viewpoint. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. The vibe is very relaxed here. Well, yeah, pretty good, but we're going to get our in like tonight and then get out on the kayak tomorrow. Today, we are going to be going on a kayak to basically to one of the other islands just off here. But the water just looks amazing. So we're just here down with the front, just walking out to get our kayak. Um, it's only like a tenner for kind of as long as you want. So, yeah, it should be, should be good. But a lot of kayaking to do out on the open ocean. But, uh, yeah, this is... This is the place now, look at this. It's absolutely class. After kayaking for about an hour and a half, I didn't think it was going to be that long. I'm absolutely knackered, but we arrived at a place like kind of opposite El Nido town. Um, and it's really nice, hardly anyone here uh, on the beach, so it's pretty class. Look at this. It's absolutely savage. And a little walk down here. Let's see what's going on. Afternoon of snorkeling and stuff in this area. Saw that a uh, terrible coral here is very, very much so alive. And now we have to make the trek back, which is nearly an hour and a half of kayaking. So, yeah, let's enjoy.
El Nido town, which is kind of nice. It's got a lot of like bars, cafes, that kind of stuff. But the main attraction is obviously the beach that's here and the beaches that are around uh, the area. But yeah, it's not that busy, um, really, as beaches go. You do get sunburn here. Like, I don't usually get burnt, but I'm a bit burnt today after yesterday. So, trying to stay out of the sun as much as possible. But, um, yeah, this is the El Anido Beach, which is pretty famous, but it's the ones that are around here that are actually better ones to go to. So, the one we were at yesterday, it was like, it's just like over there. It's like a half an hour kayak from here, but it was like two hours for us from the other beach. But uh, yeah, you've got this kind of little bit of a beach from stuff all along here. Uh, it's bars, cafes, restaurants and stuff. Um, Kind of different to where we're staying. We're staying like over uh, the other beach and it's like more resorty and stuff. But here is kind of got a lot more kind of going on for nightlife and all that kind of stuff. This is just kind of like the streets and stuff that are here. If you're interested to know that. That's the Friends Hostel, which is like the most famous one here. We wanted to stay at that, but um, it gets booked out very, very quickly. I'm okay, thanks. So yeah, just people are always like, trying to give you motorbikes, give you lifts and these little choice good things. It's actually so handy. We've got like a few like just uh, walking only streets like, which is pretty good because the traffic obviously it can be a bit much with all them little trikes and stuff going around. But um, yeah, I'm gonna have a look. I'm okay, thank you. Um, everyone's trying to sell stuff here and talk to you, but anyway, but yeah, it's pretty good. It's just a little have a walk around on the sandy roads of here in El Nido. Like there's just, there's just something to it, I think. This feels cool. So yeah, really enjoying it here in Anido so far. Here for another like three days or so. On the main streets here, you've also got like all the bunting and stuff all over the streets. These guys look really cool. Gives off the top of South America vibe, so. I'm actually going to be trying some Filipino food and the adobo, which is like the number one uh, kind of food that they do do here. There's actually not that many Filipino like restaurants, it's all like westernized and other kind of cuisines and stuff. But so yeah, looking forward to trying this. Like, it's so nice there's hardly anyone here as well, which is great. Finally, I have some adobo. Mm. Let's try it. It's a sauce. It incredible. That's really good. The 40 minute kind of spin out on the scooter to the Nakapan beach, which is like one of the most famous beaches here. And it is pretty sensational, uh, to say the least. Have a look at this. This is such a long beach. The water looks like amazing. So. So the reason I was just showing you what some of the local stuff was like there is just um, because it's it's quite poor here. It's more than I expected. I didn't expect it to be kind of as poor as it is. Once you go out of the main kind of like little tourist areas, it's a pretty impoverished place. And like, yeah, 25% of the population or 20% of the population are living below the poverty line. But uh, yeah, so that's something just to keep in note while, when you're visiting the Philippines. And today now, it's just the next day now. We're now going out and doing one of the famous like tours from here. So we're doing like tour A and tomorrow we're going to uh, Koran. So yeah, hopefully this should be good. This is our boat for the day. So it's like seven hours, 25 quid. Let's do it. We're going into the big lagoon on this kayak, little wooden thing here. But yeah, it looks very, very nice. The water is so, so clear. This is the big lagoon. It's absolutely unreal. lunch 
here. This is Simisu Island. Oh, this is pretty good. Some really, really clear water, and you got some guys like selling coconuts and beers. So this water is just amazing. I don't know how much time I'm going to, I'm going to say this, but look at that. This is the secret lagoon where we're going to be spending the next few minutes, 15 minutes, but it's absolutely savage all around here. Just standing in the shade here, but look at the water. It's just insane. This is the snorkeling spot that we're stopped down here called Finn Rock. So, we're just going over here. It should be good. This is the final stop of the boat stop. It's the Seven Commandos Beach. This is just around the corner from Grand Grand Beach. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot better than that one. And you can do a lot of snorkeling just off the shore there. So guys, that was the boat tour A that we did today. Um, you probably should do like tour C as well. If you are coming here, uh, just go see like more of the island stuff around here. They are really, really good. They're pretty affordable. It was like 25 euros, something like that. So. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a really good like day out. You're gone for ages. Get a bit of food. Um, so yeah, happy with with it. Like, and I hope you enjoy looking at the views. Like, they're pretty sensational out there, and the water here is just amazing. So yeah, tomorrow we will be heading for Koran. We have arrived in Koran and we're actually staying in dorms for once because um, it is actually pretty expensive here for accommodation so that's why we're doing this but uh, yeah just a bit about the ferry the ferry is kind of expensive it's like 52 euros each or something and we had a last minute cancellation last night and we had to get on the one today um, so it was a bit annoying but yeah there's security going on to it like there's like sniffer dogs there's x-rays there's everything like so yeah be careful be on your best behavior if you are coming through the port in El Nido. But yeah, it took about five hours. The sea was pretty choppy. Um, but yeah, it was fine. This is where I was staying. I'm just in this house here. It's probably a little like restaurants and cafes and stuff just outside it. And places for beer, actual pint. It's kind of cool. And they have live music till 11 every night. down at the pier um, for the ultimate tour of Quran which uh, should be good like so we're up here like half past eight um, and I think we're back around five like so it's a long day on the boat but yeah the day's looking pretty good down here at the harbour just waiting to go on to our tour boat uh, which is bringing us like to like Twin Lakes and some of the other famous spots around here I haven't had it for a while, but Southeast Asian confusion is back. We're just like the last people nearly to leave, and it's just all confusion. The guys don't really seem to know what boat we're on or anything, so yeah, I missed it. And here we go again. This is the first stop of the tour, which is the Coral Lake. Which is going to be pretty good, I think. We're here for like 50 minutes or something like that. So the next stop, we're here at Skeleton Wreck, which is a 40 meter long ship. So we're going to have to like basically snorkel down to it. Like so, yeah, it should be interesting to see. It is class around here, and the water is amazing. Look at it. Stop. So you can go onto the island if you want, or you can kayak around, or you can just go to one of the snorkel spots that's out here. So we're gonna go and do another little snorkel. But the water is just insane. Like, look at this. It's just ridiculous. This 
area is the Twin Lagoon where we're stopping and um, it's absolutely class. But gonna, yeah, you can do the, the kayaking, snorkeling, whatever again. But I think it's like you do the kayaking the whole way like in there and around the corner. So yeah, it should be pretty good. So hopefully I'll bring my camera and be able to show you what's around here. But yeah, all the landscape around here is just absolutely class. We are kayaking in the lagoon here, which is uh, unbelievably nice as well. Um, that's not too busy either. But uh, yeah, it's savage. And this is Lagoon 2, so kind of similar, but still just very, very nice too. Um, we're going off the same kayak, it's like a two minute little kayak around, but uh, yeah, it is unreal. Is it helping or not? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you so much. We went to two different lakes, which I couldn't really bring the camera to because they're just like, um, yeah, I'm a bit weird about it. But here is the entrance. Absolutely unreal around here. It's <laughs> So yesterday we did the, uh, on a diving tour, so Laura did some like shipwreck diving and stuff and since I don't have my license I couldn't really do it but I could still like free dive like so far down, like five, five meters if I possibly could. Um, this is without any equipment, just like fins and stuff so I was able, still able to see stuff from the, from the dive boat but um, yeah so today now we're going on like the reefs and wrecks tour uh, which should be pretty pretty good but it's going to be a long day again, it's like another six to eight hour trip we're going to be seeing like some uh like beaches and also seeing some other shipwrecks that are like more shallow but uh yeah so far these boat tours have been absolutely amazing and just the water is just class and i've said it so many times already but uh yeah it really really is so the first stop on this tour if you can hear me was actually to a place we went yesterday doing the diving, which I just didn't bring my camera. So we just went to the same place again. Because <laughs> we thought we were going to a different one, but anyway. Uh, that's a bit of a pain, pain in the hole. But I think we're going to a different one now, so that should be good. Really huge resort up here on the hill, like in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be absolutely massive when it's done. It's like a housing estate. We arrived at Pass Island, which is like maybe two hours away from Koran town. But it's just like this little oasis in the middle of uh, of nowhere. But we did stop at one rank on the way. Um, I regret so much not having a GoPro. Um, it was really, really shallow. It was an old uh, Japanese gunboat, and that was really, really cool. Um, but yeah, this tour is a lot more time on the boats than the previous ones, but it uh, brings you to a place like this. Which is class. So you've got like the beach, the crystal, kind of clear up the waters just over there. And it's a bit cloudy actually, but no harm because it's pretty hot. All the boats pulled up. And you've just got this whole area of palm trees and little huts and stuff. And yeah, we're gonna be having our dinner just like just over there. But yeah, look at this is pretty cool. Pig here. Look at that. Pig. A few chickens, but hilarious. A little piggy. But uh, yeah, I went out into the water, some mangroves and stuff here. Uh, saw some giant clams and these little nasty territorial fish, these little white things trying to bite you. They're really annoying, but yeah, we just chilled out here for like an hour and 20 minutes or so. so our time here in Koran and Palawan is over for now. And like I honestly, I can't really recommend it enough. Um, the scenery is just class. The tours are really, really good. The water is amazing. Uh, some of the cons is like the food is expensive, and there's not much of like of their own kind of stuff that's here. So that's just some one of the main issues. But other than that, um, I would definitely you definitely have to come to these places. Like if you are thinking about visiting the Philippines. Airport 
here was the, built in partnership with the Koreans. It's one of the smallest airports I've ever seen. So the departure gate is actually on the outside. <laughs> it's kind of funny. This is the check-in. There's only two airlines here. One, two. Security's there and then we're through over here. <laughs> the plane we're going on, little propeller planes. I haven't been on one of these in years. But uh, we should get some low flying footage, which should be good. CB Airport and like we pre-booked online a taxi to Mobile which is like 70 euros but if you actually just wait and get when you get here you actually get it for 50 um, but I just read online that you should pre-book it but there's actually zero need to um, you can just arrive in and just get it for cheaper so piece of advice we've arrived in Mobile just spent like the night here and stuff it's a lot more affordable than Alido and Quran and then places um, but it's really <laughs> Absolutely pissing down. That's new, wasn't expecting that. So the first thing that we are going to be doing here in Mobile is the famous kind of sardine run. So it's actually a free activity you can do here. Um, and then also you're going to be in the canyoneering here tomorrow or the next day. But uh, yeah, you can just basically just swim out to it. Um, there is tours that offer this. And you can see turtles and all that kind of stuff too. But uh, yeah, you can do it for free if you know where to go. So it's like just down by one of the beaches here and uh, you can just like swim out to it, which is yeah, pretty good. And uh, yeah, always have a free activity to do. It's a bit more rubbishy around the here than it was in Palawan anyway, definitely. The main strip here in Mobile all the bars and stuff is pretty noisy at the moment, a lot of construction and bikes and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is the main main street here. All the bars and uh, restaurants and stuff are all here. We actually went in there last night, which is pretty good. It was pretty good. And it's a lot cheaper than El Nido and Coron, like half the price, which is insane. sardine run and it's like at high tide so you actually have to swim out quite a bit and it's pretty deep so you probably don't get like the best view the woman at the like kind of desk you have to pay like a tourism entrance fee of like 100 each she kind of said if you come at low tide you can get a lot better view of them but there's loads of turtles here it's pretty mad like we saw three or four turtles in the space of maybe like half an hour 25 minutes out in the water uh, but there's just millions and millions of sardines it's really crazy they're all just like going all around you and stuff it's uh yeah it's pretty mad we just came for a bit of food here in mobile and you've got this huge four food court which has like basically every cuisine you could ever think of it's all in here but we decided to go for the mexican because that's our favorite kind of food to get as i say we did the canyoneering which is like one of the main things you can come here to do in mobile and it is it was very very good um it's just so so busy there can be like one to two thousand people doing it like per day um, we also did like the zip line as well, which is which was really good. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't obviously bring my camera because it's not a GoPro. But one of the guys had a GoPro, so hopefully I'll be able to use some of his footage by asking politely. Um, to be able to show you what what was going on. But um, yeah, it's a great experience. It's like forty quid or something. But um, one or two issues with it: you're a little bit mammy. To, like uh, they're always like watching you, making sure you're doing everything right. You can't like have your own little freedom to kind of walk around on your own. It's kind of like you need to move all the time. Just in contrast to the one we did in Greece, like it was kind of like you kind of like do whatever, just don't be stupid. But uh, yeah, here it was like you constantly need to keep moving and stuff. It's just because uh, it's just so busy, um, and they're just so safety aware here as well. They just don't want anything to happen because they're like pretty reliant on the on that on that for tourism and for tourists to come here. Um, but yeah, it is good. It's a good experience to go and do.
this is Oipi, which is like just up from Marlborough. So it's a huge beach that's here. We just came up here, had a few beers on the beach and stuff, but yeah, it's like a 250 little tuk-tuk ride out. Our short time here staying in Cebu or Mobile is over. We're back at the airport in Cebu and uh, we're now going to Boracay, which is like the most famous island or most tourist dense um, on our island. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what that is, yeah. So just came through the airport and uh, not allowed to bring extension cables through. So like, yeah, I let that take it off. So you check it in and I went to like, he was like, oh, I'll go try and see and you just check it in in another bag. And he was like, ah, 50 US dollars to check in an extension cable. I was like, that's more than my fucking 20 kilo bag. Anyway, we're off the bar guy. It's in like a 45 minute flight. This has to be like the smallest airport I've ever seen. It's got one belt. There you go. So ridiculous. <laughs> we just arrived on Barakai Island and we've like checked in and then stuff. I think they bring a nice like Airbnb, which is like it was cheaper than like staying in hostels to get like our own private Airbnb. We're down further down the white beach, down the uh, down the end of it where it's a lot quieter. But uh, yeah, getting here, you're like stopping, getting like trike, then you go pay these like environmental fee, boat fee, terminal fee. We just queue up every single time for each one. So it would just make sense if they just had all in one. You just pay all your fees, um, kind of go like straight in, the, especially in the port area. That would just make a lot of sense because you like pay one and then you queue up the cashier right next to it. But um, yeah, it costs like 675 pesos each, which is like 11 euros each in kind of like fees and minor transport to get here, um, which wasn't too bad in the end, but it will put some people off. We're just walking kind of down the front now and around here, you can see why people would kind of come here just on the holidays. It would make sense like, because it is really, really nice. It's got loads of different restaurants and stuff, but it is on a more pricier side. Um, it's It looks like it's even more than uh, El Nido and Caron, which was saying something, because um, that was only Western prices and, and here is looking like it's pretty much the same, other than alcohol. So this is all like the front here and you've got the sea all along like the famous kind of white beach which is like the number one beach here but uh yeah it is very very nice here the beach here isn't kind of probably what you would expect it's just kind of covered in seaweed but you have to go a little bit further out just kind of get away from it but uh i didn't think this was supposed to be here at the moment online this only happens like seasonally but uh yeah, the whole way down is just covered in seaweed. We're down on the white beach again, just for the sunset, which is Barakai is known for having some of the world's best sunsets. So, yeah, let's see. There's hundreds and hundreds of people out on the beach here, though, out waiting to look at this. People, 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 all the way down. And we're actually in the quieter area. So, I imagine further up there, it's just uh, extremely, extremely busy. But, uh, yeah, this is the sunset so far, probably another 10 minutes or so. I think really cool. <laughs> so we're on the main kind of street now and it's like so much more developed than the other places that we've been to. Like everywhere has like correct footpaths and there's like trees and stuff and shrubbery kind of everywhere. Um, like you can tell there's a lot of money gone into this place um, maybe especially since they did the rejuvenation in 2018 when it was closed for six months for tourism but uh, now tourism is really back and it is pretty pretty busy here uh, for the size of the island you know what I mean it's kind of just like actually fully kind of built out which is kind of unheard of really the most part of the place that we've been to is just what everyone walking on the road things everywhere so that is nice, but it, it does really feel like this is just kept so well because it is the number one destination in all the Philippines. It's got this a cool little shopping street, like local things, slow little kind of little shops and stuff. Um, but it seems like it's a place where you know, actually buy stuff if you're living here. So like meat, fruit and veg, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's cool, nice little street here in Boracay. You got more of these 
little houses and lots of little shopping places, um, which is now changing into more touristy ones, but still, there's loads of them. Really different from everywhere else to be in the Philippines. It's definitely way more developed and stuff. We're heading up to Puga Beach, which is at the very, very top of the island. And apparently it's not going to be as affected by the green algae as the other one. Um, it's just basically a hole along the whole way, whole shore. Kind of makes it a bit off putting going into the water because you can't like see anything underneath it. So hopefully it's be a little bit better. Right, so we are here, and it actually doesn't look like lots of green algae, which is good. There isn't. Ideal, but it's a lot choppier. A lot choppier indeed. The other thing is it's so peaceful. But it looks pretty nice. One thing about the Puka Beach, it's a lot more choppy and windy here, so I mean, it's kind of like swimming itself and kind of a bit annoying. But uh, there's nothing to look at snorkel wise. Um, kind of thing that seems to be the case here for the most part, anyway. Unless you go on one of the boat tours, which I don't think we're going to do because we're going to Balabac. So we're on a boat for like five days straight or something, well, four days. So I might just leave that, yeah, because otherwise you're kind of going to be sick of the boats. But uh, it's a lot nicer here than the White Beach, I think, because you're not getting harassed all the time. So definitely a pro because you're getting stopped every two seconds down in the rest of Borkai, it's so annoying. Walking along the strip, well the front, the beach, and uh, it's every, every, every bar basically has like live music on it, but yeah, it's really busy around. I'm gonna see all the people, but less people trying to sell you stuff at night time, um, which is nice. Oh, I am going to pitch back, but yeah, it's really good if you want to come here and listen to live music. If you're into that, then this is your place. It's like one of the points of interest on the beach on White Beach. Um, it's like an hour walk straight up from us called Willie's Rock. It's basically just kind of like <laughs> the Virgin Mary on a rock. But yeah, here it is. You do walk in and there's Virgin Mary just there. <laughs> Don't really understand why it's a tourist attraction, but there you go. Into the sunset. And it is now so busy. All the way down the beach. Again. And up here. This is near Station 1, which is um, the most popular station, but yeah, it's so busy here. It doesn't really feel like the Philippines. Um, I think we're here for too long. We're here for like six days. I think we should only been here for three. Look how busy it's gotten here. Today we have rented a bike, which there it is, just to go around the island here, which is something that I kind of semi don't recommend but do. It's it's quite expensive. It costs us nearly two, basically 2,000 pesos for the day, which is like 30 quid. Um, so between the two of us, it's not too bad, but um, <clears throat> to go around the island, which you can do pretty easily through e trike but you have to obviously keep stopping and going and going in. But uh, we just got it just for one day as like an activity to go and look around and just see some bits of the island that we wouldn't potentially go look at like so yeah have a look at see what we do find here but it's very very small island this beach like down there but uh get to drive like another like 15 me 15 minutes like this way to go around just go down here so yeah let's hopefully it's good we couldn't get down to that beach because actually like a private kind of area so we came to a different beach the other side called Devildeny beach i think that's what it's called um, which is really nice and there's somewhere to park which is good because it's so busy around here um, don't know if I'm parking can be a bit of a problem so yeah but this is where we are the Vildi Beach so a little bit of the green but not as bad 
But uh, yeah, have a look around here. Looks like you're in Italy or something. As Laura said. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just chill out here for a half hour or so and then move on to the next place. Come to the other side now, away from the, wind, the Windy Beach. I'd gone to Iliganig Beach. Or two, apparently, because one is a private one, so you can come to this one. But it's so much rougher and windy here, and there's no tourists at all, like, so. But it's still nice, but I don't think we're going to be going in. We arrived down at Tambisan Beach, which is right down at the bottom. Apparently one of the popular beaches here. <laughs> Again, there's hardly anybody here. Um, everyone just used to be at White Beach. No other one. Maybe Puka Shell Beach where we were at the other day. But uh, for the most part, all the beaches are relatively empty. This is the Hampisan Beach. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. And then you've got out here, you see the Crocodile Island is just there. So they do a lot of the snorkeling tours. Got a bit of a bay. Some decrepit structure here that I don't really know what it is. But um, yeah, this is it. I'm actually going to finish this part of the Philippines here. So this video has just been going yeah, around Palawan to El Nido, to Caron, to Cebu, and to Boracay. But then we're leaving um, tomorrow. We're going to Balabac. So we're having to go back to Palawan, unfortunately. But no, unfortunately. Um, to try and do this tour. So I think it's gonna be a whole separate video um, Which I'm really looking forward to. I yeah, hope you enjoyed this seeing the Philippines um, Just one more thing like on Boracay, like it's really good if you're coming here for like a holiday Just to relax. You've got nice restaurants. But you're paying European prices close to anyway beer is cheaper, but It's not it's not cheap here at all um, If you want good food and stuff, it's not also, like, their charities prices, and then some of the areas you drive around, like, it's like poverty, like, oh, like unbelievable, like, <clears throat> I didn't expect it, uh, especially because this island is so pristine in such other ways. Uh, yeah, kind of sucks, but it is a beautiful place, and do recommend to come here. But yeah, maybe not if you're a backpacker. There's not a lot to do really. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video on the Philippines, and hope it inspired you maybe to come here because it is a great uh, country, just a little bit expensive and the food is uh, annoying because you don't get food poisoning and it's pretty common. But yeah, so look, let's look forward to Balabak. What's up guys, it is Sam here and this is the start of our Balabak video, which is gonna be the next three nights, four days in the most remote area of the Philippines um, on an organized tour with Lagoon Adventures. Like, so hopefully it's gonna be good, but it starts we're basically up at like quarter to three in the morning and we didn't get in until like near 10 o'clock last night from, from flight. So yeah, it starts uh, very early and you've got six hours of uh, transport to get down there first. So hopefully we can get some sleep on the way. But yeah, this is how it starts if you're gonna go to Balabag. down to the port and uh, yeah it's very noisy because there's generators and stuff going on like but yeah it took about six hours or so but it's not too bad really kind of in and out of sleeping but um, now we're just waiting there's nothing to eat here <laughs> just snacks and shite but anyway we're down to the port and there is no phone signal so yeah it's true we have 45 minutes on a road to get to the campsite island so.
pieces off, but you know, it's still absolutely class. First old starfish that we've seen. Look at it. I actually see it pretty clearly, which is surprising since I'm not under the water. <laughs> but yeah, I think we've got like another 20 minutes here and then like on to the next one and into base camp. We've got our second stop, which is Padawan Island. We're actually going to be having our lunch. But uh, yeah, it's again, it's just so, so, so nice. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this around. I don't know. Water and like a little sand bar right there. Walk out there and walk. Yeah. It's a good few boats here. Not maybe as remote as we thought it was. Like having our lunch, kind of like in this little forest. Kind of like a, some sort of resort. I don't know. But anyway. This is where it'll be. And we are getting some bars at 4G. We're out towards the end of this little sandbar now. Absolutely. Let's just get to it. Just going for my fall directions. <laughs> it is just unreal here. Unreal, like just unbelievable. This is Kani Bunga Island, where some people do stay here. There's a few like tents and stuff. Yep, like a shop, no kind of stuff. But other than that, I know it's kind of more the same. But what else can we expect? <laughs> we are doing island hopping, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a video more for people that are thinking about coming here and what you can expect to see. Arrived at the campsite. And uh, I thought I might have been able to stay in like a teepee or something. Oh, I am so sunburned. I know, so hard to stay out in the sun. But no, I actually am staying in a tent. Look. So, I'm staying in this bad boy. <laughs> but anyway, it's nice. Sandbar. So it's gonna have a little walkway. I'll go out there in a while. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely class. Look at the water. Like it just doesn't uh, really feel uh, kind of real or anything. To be honest. Absolutely class. Bit of a rocky road to get here, but. It is absolutely amazing here. I've never seen water like it. And it's just like goes on forever. It's just ridiculous. I'm just showing lots and lots of water, but like that is just the attraction. It's just insane. We've got like a good little sandbar here as well, but just walked out all the boats. So it's not as remote here as uh, it seems. <laughs> it's uh, we all have full bars and everything, so. But yeah. Oh, oh no. it is, it's just unbelievable, like I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> so we have arrived at Kantamara Island. It's the next stop after Anuk. It's gonna be hard to beat that because Anuk is the best one that's here. But uh, yeah, it's gonna have a little look around. There's our boat. And I think it's just like a sandbar just like over here, so let's go have a look. There is sandbars here, but I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get to it. It's like a good bit out. Um, unfortunately, there's another group actually stopped at it, but it's just like out towards that building there. That's where the sandbar is, so yeah, we're going to cross all this to get there, so. Yeah, after this we're stopping at the starfish. I'm not going to be able to film because they're all underwater, but uh, yeah. What can I say though, Anuk Island is just one of the best places I've ever been to in my whole life. Amazing.
So it is day three and uh, a lot of hungover heads this morning. But uh, yeah, we were a bit late leaving, 11 o'clock or something. But um, right at our first stop today, it's very bright. But uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the beaches. A little bit of stuff on the ground, but it's uh, great. But uh, yeah, we're here for a sustainable period of time, apparently. Now having lunch and stuff. So here is just like a massive sandbar. This water is boiling. It's like when you stand into it, it's like really, really fizzy. I don't know what's going on, but it's like you're at the end of the world here or something. There's a guy who's living in a house all the way out there. Bunkers. The next stop that we're going to is actually a sandbar, but I don't think actually going to bring the camera because. It's pretty deep, unfortunately. Um, so you can't really see it. But the water is still really good, though. So you can sort of see it. It's like knee deep, something like that. So, pretty cool. Back at the camp for the last night of the trip. It's been absolutely class. Um, I do really, really recommend it. The tour people are not the best, but place just makes up for it because it's so so cool um yeah definitely do this if you do have the opportunity to do it it's um some of the most untouched beach areas you'll ever see in your whole life um and do it soon because it's uh going to get all made into resorts and stuff so yeah I'm not sure how much, what else I we're gonna have to film here, but today was a bit underwhelming compared to like Anuk Island. It was just so amazing. Like it's the best place I've nearly ever been in my whole life. Just, wow.